I can't believe it folks, it's been three years since I've shown off this stove. This is the Soto ST320 cassette stove. That's right folks, inside of this is a stove, a highly unique stove. In fact, it's probably the most unique stove that I've ever seen, the most unique that I've ever used on the channel. My name is Luke, this is the Outdoor Gear Review, and this is my review of the ST320 from Soto. <laughs> Since I posted my video on this stove roughly three years ago, I've continued to test it out and use it in just about every sort of situation that you can imagine. I've taken it across the country numerous times, backpacking, camping trips, overlanding trips, warm weather, cold weather, I've used it in everything, rain, snow, and so on. This is a stove folks, that I'll just go ahead and say this. It's one of my most favorite backpacking camping products of all time. I love this thing. And in this episode, I'm going over why. I will be sharing why I like it so much, what makes it so unique, and why I can easily recommend it for most people, but not all. Why don't we start and go ahead and take the stove out of this case here. So first off, you get this canvas case, Velcro locked. This is a nice case, everybody. It does a great job of protecting this stove. This is the stove itself. Additionally, we have the pot support. I mentioned before that this is a cassette stove. Watch this. With the stove structure, you can see that the legs themselves pop out and the stove opens up like this. Now, right here, we have two springs and that's where the stove connects. It connects into these spring plates and locks into place there. This, my friends, is how you connect the stove to the stand itself. So you can see that you have the spring plates here. You can see here on the body that you have two slots. They will lock into those spring plates, just like so. Just like that, it all locks together. If you wanna release the stove from the stand itself, push in on those spring plates and it will pop off. Once you have the stove and the stand interconnected, they are stuck together. You can pick the stove up by the stove itself or by the stand. Now look at this everybody, this is very, very unique. Everything about this is rather unusual. It's a cassette stove for one, the way that the stove fits inside and then attaches to the body. It's different, really, really different. When it comes to the fuel for this stove, it runs on butane. This is a can of butane covered with a butane cover. This is from a company called Soto Labo. They're from Japan. I had to use like Google website translator to translate the website. I sent them an email and I was able to ultimately order one of these through customer service and I had it shipped to the US. Basically what this does, not only does it make your canister look cool, but it also insulates the canister as well. I wanna say this was like 20 bucks. I really don't remember. No matter what, it wasn't a bad price. When it comes time to attach the fuel canister to the stove itself, it attaches at the very bottom here. Basically, you take the canister, you push it into the connection hardware, and then you twist it. And that locks the canister to the stove itself. With the fuel canister connected to the stove and the stove connected to the stand, let's go over the features real quick. So we have the adjuster here to turn it on and off to go all the way up or to simmer. We have a igniter here. This is the heat shield. This does two things. It protects the canister from heat and it also directs all of the heat to your pot or cup. Then you have the burner head and right there is the igniter. You can see with the setup here that the stove itself creates a sort of windshield on the sides. Then you have the heat shield in the front. Again, that's acting as a windshield. The only really exposed aspect is the back side of the stove. Once you have the heat shield back, that's when you could put the pot supports on and it goes just like this. Basically, it lays over the top of these locking teeth and that creates the platform for your pot, cup, or pan. As I mentioned before, I've been using this for a long time, multiple years now. Now, originally when I discovered this stove, it was not available in the United States, so I had to get it imported. I was able to do this by contacting Japanese sellers on eBay. I got them to locate the stove, put up a custom listing for me, and that way I was able to purchase it. I wanna say that I paid 120 for the stove at the time. Now, luckily things are a whole lot simpler. You can purchase this product off of Amazon right now, and you're not going to pay what I paid for it. You're gonna pay less. I'll tell you what folks, let's go over 
some stats real quick and while doing so I will show you all this stove in action over the last couple of years. At the time of filming this episode you can find these stoves for around $75 to $80 bucks on Amazon. Even on eBay they're about $85. Bucks. The weight of the stove with the case and that includes the pot supports, that's 15.6 ounces. The weight of the stove with the pot supports and a full can of gas, that's one pound, 11.5 ounces. This stove is made from aluminum, stainless steel. There's some brass and also some plastic. When the stove is folded, it measures one inch deep, three inches wide, and it's five and a half inches long. When it's fully set up, 14 inches long. And the stove is six inches wide, and it stands roughly three and a half inches tall. With this stove not being officially released in the United States, finding information about it is a little bit limited. From what I understand, the BTU ratings on this stove is between 8,000 to 9,000. It really does vary depending on the source that you look at and also the translation. It runs on butane and butane only. From what I understand, adapters for other fuels do not work with this stove. I do have a few interesting points to mention about this stove. Point number one, this stove is very popular with motorcycle campers in Japan because of the small form factor. At the same time, it doesn't weigh a lot. Point number two is this. There is an older version of this stove called the STG-10. That stove offers slightly more BTUs than the ST-320, but for some reason, that stove has been discontinued. Now everybody, let's go over my pros and cons that I have for this stove, including my experiences with it. So right off the bat, this is incredibly well made. This is a very solid stove. It features an excellent construction. All of the edges are smooth where they need to be. You're looking at high quality materials and the fit and finish is very, very good. Next, as far as BTUs go, we're looking at 8,000 to 9,000 depending on your source. What it is exactly, I do not know, but I can tell you that the overall performance of the stove is very good. It's more than enough BTUs to do whatever it is that you wanna do. You can cook, you can fry, you can boil. It does what you need it to do. Next, everybody, the stove seems to be very fuel efficient. One of these eight ounce cans of butane lasts for absolute ever. It's amazing how long one of these cans will last. At the same time, butane is super inexpensive. You can get 12 cans for like 30 bucks. I promise you, no matter how much you like to go camping, it's gonna take a long time to go through that much fuel with this stove. Next, everybody, I love the way that the stove opens up into that V formation. The walls themselves, the heat shield, this offers good wind protection, but I have to say this, it's not windproof. If you're going to be out on a breezy day, I would highly recommend some sort of windscreen. It's wind resistant, it's not windproof. Talking about the way that it opens up into a V, I love the way that the stove itself fits inside of the case. That is just so smart, and at the same time, it's highly unique. So you have this ultra compact, very slim stove setup. I just love it. I just think it's really, really cool. In a world of very similar products, this is truly different, and I respect that. Going back to the overall performance of this stove, I should mention this. Because of the way that you have the V walls and the heat shield, all of these factors work together to direct the heat from the stove right to your pot, pan, or cup. That way there's very little heat loss, and this assists with having faster boil times and being able to cook quicker. Quicker than you would with some other stoves. Talking about butane for a second, it is not as easy to find as, say, isobutane. You can go into a Walmart, you will find isobutane or hardware store or whatever, an outfitter. That is not going to be the case in most places with butane. Luckily, you can find butane online and it's very inexpensive. Talking about butane as far as performance goes, this excels in warmer conditions, but when the temps get down to roughly 50 degrees and lower, that's when butane begins having a hard time. It really does take additional care to use this to have it perform at its top level. In other words, you need to keep the fuel warm. A fuel cover will help, but at the same time, before you use your stove, you may wanna heat up your fuel. Put it inside of your jacket with you, warm it up, and it will perform very, very well. But if you let the fuel get cold, the performance does decrease. Next, everybody, we have to talk about just how stable of a platform this stove creates. Because of the way that the legs unfold and the design of the stove itself, the stove is super stable. So you can put a small cup on there, no big deal. A larger pot, no big deal. You can boil water or you can use a frying pan on there. Speaking of using this stove, the adjuster works very well. You can go all out or you can dial it back and simmer. Next everybody, I have to say I'm very impressed with the storage case that is included. It's a thick canvas, it's a heavy canvas. It does a fantastic job at keeping your stove safe. And I have to say that it's really held up well over the last couple of years. As far as setting up the stove goes, it is very simple. You open up the case, pull out the stove, you crack it open like a cassette tape, pull out the stove, connect the two, connect the fuel and you're ready to go. All of this is very simple, especially when you get some time under your belt setting this up. 
When it comes to attaching the fuel to the stove itself, the first couple times that you do this, it may feel unnatural. The key is this, you need to push the plastic connection piece into the fuel itself then push it in and twist. When it comes to the electric igniter, I've always had it to work. But the thing is this, it may take multiple clicks. In some cases, maybe even up to 10. It really does depend on the conditions. Luckily, I can say that it's never failed me, but I've definitely seen better igniters out there. Now everybody, let's talk about the type of cooking that you can do on this stove. As you all can see here, this is a very small form factor system. This is made for very personal levels of cooking. For one person, perfect. Two people, you can get it done, but it's pushing it. This is not a stove for a group of people. As I mentioned before, it's for intimate situations. Not that type of intimate, that'd be weird. Anyways, you're going to get the best cooking experience with a pot, pan, or cup. That's around six inches in diameter. For an example, this cast iron skillet, this is the six inch version, and it works perfectly with this stove. Now that I'm thinking about it, I believe this is a six and a half inch skillet. No matter what, around six inches, seven inches, no more than that on this stove. As far as weight goes, the stove is hefty. When you pick this up, you hold it in your hand, and we're talking about just the stove in the case, it's hefty in your hand. It's a very solid stove. Then you have to factor in the fuel. With the fuel and the stove itself, you're looking at almost two pounds. If you're a through hiker, forget about this stove. If you're going out for a day trip, an overnight trip, car camping, truck camping, moto camping, canoeing, rafting, something like that, this is going to work great. I personally take this stove with me when I'm going out for shorter duration adventures. That's where it really excels, in addition to car camping, truck camping, and so on. And those, my friends, are the pros and cons that I have for the ST320. I absolutely love the stove. As I mentioned before, it's unlike anything I've ever used or tested or seen before. The form factor is cool. The way that it stores is cool. The case itself is cool. The stove is cool. This stove is cool. How would you personally describe this stove? Is it cool? As I mentioned at the beginning, I really do love this stove and those are the reasons why. It is a great performer. It's not very expensive, fuel's super inexpensive, but you do have to keep in mind that butane does not work well in cold conditions. There are some workarounds. You can keep the fuel warm, and you will have to in cold conditions, but certainly in colder weather, there's better stoves out there than those that run on butane. Now, my friends, I would like for you all to sound off in the comment section. What do you all think about the ST320? from Soto. It is such a unique product and performs so well, I just absolutely love it. My question for you all is this, would you consider purchasing and using a stove like this? Every time that I take the stove out in an adventure video, I receive tons of comments and questions about it. What is the stove? I can't find it. And that's because it's not officially offered in the US. Hopefully Soto USA will begin selling this stove officially because it's just so unique, so cool, performs so well. There's not many outdoor products out there that are fun to use. This stove is one of them. It's a pleasure to use. It always works. The quality is great. And with that, I am done. Folks, hit the like button before you go. I do appreciate it. It helps the channel. Consider supporting the channel, Patreon, YouTube. This channel is agenda free. I'm not here to sell products. I'm here to share information. And that really does separate this channel from others out there. So if you want to support a channel that's unique in that way, you can do so with the Outdoor Gear Review. Also, make sure to check out my second channel, A Quiet Place Adventures. On that channel, you will find adventures that are similar to those that I post here but with no talking. It's all about nature, and it truly is a unique way of getting into the outdoors with me. If you enjoy that type of content, I do appreciate it if you would subscribe. Everyone, take care, be well, strength and honor.